Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. New report says investors are profiting from the climate crisis. Australian policemen acquitted for murder of Aboriginal teen. Mine workers go on strike in South Africa. And educators in Slovenia protest for living wages. We begin with a new report which has shown how asset managers are profiting from climate crisis and violent border policies. Friends of the Earth United States and Transnational Institute surveyed the investments of BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street. The report covers 15 companies in the fossil fuel, agribusiness and border surveillance sectors. The three asset corporations collectively hold over $650 billion in shares in these companies. Vanguard has been the biggest investor in each sector analyzed. BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street hold 28% of the shares in Chevron. The oil giant was responsible for polluting the Ecuadorian Amazon with toxic oil waste for nearly 30 years. The big three asset managers similarly hold 27% of shares in ExxonMobil and 28% in ConocoPhillips, both also responsible for oil spills in different parts of the world. They also hold 30% of Archer Daniels Midland and 22% shares in Bunch. Both agribusiness companies are linked to widespread deforestation in the Amazon. The big three are also collectively holding 32% of shares in CoreCivic and 38% of shares in the GEO Group. Both corporate private prisons and migrant detention facilities where widespread human rights violations have been documented. A 2021 ACLU report has found that hunger-striking detainees at a GEO group facility had been force-fed and abused by U.S. officials. Friends of the Earth and Transnational Institute released their findings in response to the recent United Nations IPCC report on climate adaptability. Senior campaigner Gaurav Madan has argued that governments and investors must reject the notion of sacrificial populations. We move on to Australia, where a police officer has been cleared of all charges in the murder of an indigenous teenager. Zachary Rolf shot and killed 19-year-old Kumanjai Walker in the remote community of Yuan Dumu in 2019. Four police officers had entered Walker's home to arrest him. Walker reportedly stabbed Rolf in the shoulder with a pair of scissors, after which Rolf shot him. He proceeded to fire two more shots even though another constable was restraining Walker on the ground. Prosecutors argued that the teenager did not pose a threat at the time. Zachary Rolf was committed to a trial at the Supreme Court of the Northern Territory in September 2020. The verdict was announced by a jury after five weeks of arguments on March 11. Rolf was acquitted of murder and two charges of manslaughter and engaging in a violent act causing death. Walker's family and Warpili leaders have expressed disappointment over the verdict. They have denounced racism in the court system and in the police. The community has also raised concerns about the com composition of the jury, which did not include a single indigenous person. This is despite the fact that indigenous peoples form nearly 30% of the state's population. They have demanded that no more guns be allowed into remote communities and no more ex-military postings. Over 500 Aboriginal people have died in custody since the 1991 Royal Commission report. Zachary Rolf was the first police officer to ever stand trial for a murder in such a death. Next, we go to South Africa, where workers at the Sibanye Stillwater Gold Mine have gone on strike. It has been organized by the country's biggest mine unions, the National Union of Mine Workers and the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union. Workers downed tools on March 9th after rejecting a fifth wage offer from Sibania Stillwater. The unions are demanding a hike of 1,000 rand per month for surface and underground miners over three years. They have also asked for a 6% raise for officials, artisans and miners. Meanwhile, the company has so far offered a raise of 5%. Sivanya Stillwater is one of the world's largest mining companies, employing over 30,000 people in its gold operations in South Africa. It announced on March 10th that it was suspending operations at its sites. 
It has also issued a lockout notice barring all workers from the mines. NUM and AMCU have called for removal of Sivani Stillwater CEO Neil Fronman. They have argued that he has refused to meet trade union leaders and has destroyed jobs in South Africa's mining industry. Fronman reportedly bought out gold and platinum operations and put them in care and maintenance. This led to massive retrenchments. The unions have demanded that the government withdraw the mining licenses of all operations put, uh, that, uh, that was put to care and maintenance of Sibania Stillwater. The AMCU had previously led a five-month-long strike against the company in 2019. And finally, 40,000 educators across Slovenia also went on strike this week. The action was held on March 9th after the government failed to adjust salaries in line with the inflation rate. The Trade Union of Education, Science and Culture of Slovenia, or the SVIZ, said the strike spread across over 650 educational institutions. The union has been urging the Education Minister, Simona Kustec, to hold collective negotiations for months. Educators are also seeking remuneration for the work they did during the COVID-19 pandemic. They have also asked for a reform of the pay system under which many public sector workers are earning below the minimum wage. 13,000 cooks, caregivers for children with disabilities and cleaners are struggling to fulfill basic needs. Ahead of the strike, SVIZ also condemned the attempts by Kustech to obstruct the action. This included the spread of misinformation on salaries and withholding pay from striking workers. The Education Ministry also issued a circular stating that a minimum work process must be maintained. Slovenia's Strike Act or other sectoral legislations do not include such a provision. Wednesday's action received widespread support including from students, parents and at the administration. Minister Kustec has now invited SVIZ leaders and other trade unions for talks on March 15th. The union has raised eight demands, including pay agreements related to increased workloads and COVID-19 risks and also the inflation rate. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.